What's going on everybody? This is Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to introduce you to the Meta Mixed Reality Utility Kit that was recently released by Meta. And this is a pretty cool tool that allows you to basically query information about or scene, such as finding out where the walls are, where the ground is, are we inside the room, are we outside the room? There's just a lot of different APIs that you can access to get this information within the Meta XR All-in-One SDK or by actually using the Mixed Reality Utility Kit package specifically. I'm gonna show you how to use it, also how we can interact with it by using the Meta XR Simulator and then we'll build a very simple demo to show you some of the features that are available. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. Let's go ahead and add the pass-through and controller tracking building block. You guys will see here that the binding of the controllers happens automatically. Make sure to remove the camera. And some of these settings are gonna happen automatically when you start adding building blocks. So I'm just gonna show you throughout how this happens. The same one will get added as soon as we add another prefab. But in the meantime, these are some of the scene building blocks that you guys can actually add. I'm going to go ahead and add one manually because I wanna show you how this works. It's going to be the Mixed Reality Utility Kit. And you can see here that these are some of the events. Enable World Lock, it's really cool because it adds an anchor automatically, it handles all of that for you. Then you can also get the data from the device, from a prefab. These are basically going to be helpful when you want to get the actual room. So if you want to get a room that is a mock-up room, when you hit basically play in the Unity Editor, you're going to get some of these random rooms selected. Then go back into the Project Setup tool. I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply to make sure that we don't have any more changes or recommendations. Then we're going to go back into the Camera Rig and you're going to see now that the scene setting that is going to happen at Startup is going to be enabled automatically. You can also look at the Android manifest and you're gonna see that now we have all the permissions enabled. Enable shaded wireframe and that's so that you guys can see some of the actual polygons here on the 3D models that we'll be looking at in just a minute. For now, this is going to be the office that got picked, but you can't really see anything. All you see right now, it's going to be the actual anchors, the boundaries that were generated but if you want to see something actually render, you're going to have to go back into the tools here on the MR UK package and then add the effect mesh. Then in here, we're going to start looking at some of the settings. These are going to be the materials, the well, the actual material that is going to be rendered when the scene gets pulled either from the device or from the actual prefab. We can also look at border size, colliders, and then also cut holes if you want to cut through basically a window. So if you look in here, we hit play now, we can see the actual render room. In this case, we have colliders because we enable colliders. And this is really helpful because now you can start testing these in the Unity Editor. You don't have to you know, push it to a device and see if things work because this allows you to basically get information from prefab. So, this is really, really powerful when it comes to testing and designing experiences that rely on the actual physical world. So now let's go ahead and go into the effect mesh. I'm gonna change the border size to be 0.1. And you're gonna see now that the objects have an edge and that's because the border size affected the way that they get rendered. So if we change it to 0.05, now you're gonna see that there's going to be a little bit less of an edge, of a border edge on the polygons. So if we go back and change that render material here, I'm gonna just select something basically that comes out a little bit more so that we can see shadows. So you can also test shadows as well in here. And the idea is that you can change the materials, right? And that's what this is going to allow you to do. So let's change the border size to zero and then activate that Meta XR simulator so you guys can see that that actually can be tested as well. And you guys can see here that this looks really cool and everything is being basically tagged, right? We have couches, we have chairs, we have tables and the actual shapes, the actual models were generated based on the, you know, what it sees in the physical world, which in this case is emulated. So now if we go back and let's go ahead and select two labels and also cut through the window frame. So now 
now with the Meta XR Simulator, we can see that only the walls and the ground generated a material because those were the only ones that we added on the labels. And that's a pretty cool tool that allows you to have a lot more control over your scene. You can also see the holes that were selected, which in our case were the windows. So you can imagine all the different type of experiences that you can create with these features now that we have that level of control. So let's go ahead and scan my room in here. This is gonna be required if you want to push this to the actual device because the device is actually going to need the scene understanding. In this case, I have a very small office, but you still can build some experiences for that. I can resize some of the different elements just to make sure that it matches. And you guys can see here, that this now works well. This is the experience that we just built by just doing a few clicks. So now let's go back into Unity and we're gonna be adding the Learn XR Core package. And this is so that we can add a logger and I wanna just show you some of the events that get executed by using MR UK. So we're gonna go ahead and add it and then also just tweak it a little bit. I'm gonna change the X, Y, and Z position. I'm actually going to change the rotation a little bit. That way it's not tilted up and we can see it pretty well. And then if we go back into the actual MRUK, now we're gonna start binding some of the events. I'm gonna bind the scene loaded event. That way I know when the scene has been loaded. And this is helpful if you want to activate some of your game objects at a specific time. Let's say that you relied on the scene to be created, then these two events are gonna be very helpful when it comes to, you know, basically binding into your game life cycle. So it's gonna be really helpful that you have these two events available. So what I'm gonna do to test it though, let's go ahead and select the uh, game room and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play one more time. We can check it out. You can see that two events here generated in the application log. So let's start by creating a private serializable field. This is so that we can access the MR UK information. I'm also going to be creating basically a private uh, binding to the, to the actual controller. That way we can basically hit a button and then when we hit the trigger button, we're going to be placing objects on the different walls that we have detected around us. So now we're gonna be creating another Boolean because I wanna make sure that the scene has been loaded before we actually start placing those objects on the wall. And then the MRUK room is going to allow us to query information about the room, such as finding out where the walls are, where the ground is, and so on. So let's go ahead and bring in here one of the name spaces. And then I'm going to, let's go ahead and delete this. And then I'm going to be adding a new method. And this is gonna be on enable so that we can bind to determine when the scene has been loaded. So you can do MRUK and then room created event. So when the room is created, that's when I want to start binding the current room private variable that I have in here to the room that I got from the actual device. So it's gonna be very simple. We're just gonna be passing in the MRUK room. So let's go ahead and call this one room. And then now that we have this created, we should be okay. I think I have an issue here on disable. We need to actually remove the listener. Then for this new method though, we're gonna be setting this to true. Whenever this gets called, we're gonna be binding this through the inspector on the MR UK component. And then that's what's going to decide that this scene has been loaded is going to equal to true. In the meantime, I'm going to be basically just writing some log information so that we can see that on the application log, we can say has been enabled due to the scene availability. In the bind room info, this is where we're gonna be basically binding to that variable. And then we can just go ahead and change the message that we're gonna display on the log. Then in the update method, this is where we're gonna start capturing the input. So let's go ahead and do the get down. And then in our case, we're gonna be using the primary index trigger. That way, whenever I press that on the controller, we can start basically executing the code that is going to generate prefabs on the, all the different walls that we have. Then for this though, I want to add a new private property that is going to check to make sure that I don't have the current room. And then basically that is not null and that scene has been loaded. 
This is so that we can make sure that everything has been loaded before we let the person or the user actually start to place objects on the walls. And then we can say, okay, if the wall anchor objects has been created equal, basically equal to zero, if we haven't really added any objects on the walls, then we're gonna be creating them, right? Otherwise, we're gonna go through and then basically delete them all. That way we can have kind of a toggle that deletes them if they exist or creates them if we haven't created them. So the way that we can do this is we can basically loop through the list and we can loop through the list because we know that we're already placing, we know that we already have them. The count is now basically zero, so we can go ahead and destroy them. And I'm actually going to be clearing the list once we have deleted all the different objects. And we can just go ahead and say something like the wall objects were deleted for, or we can just say the wall objects were deleted. So it looks like that's good to go. So now let's go ahead and loop through. In this case, we're gonna loop through the actual anchors that we have in the room. So we can just call these something like, well, anchor, I think it's fine. And then we need to create a new, basically, object based on the prefab that we're putting above. And we're gonna be instantiating that. So the object is gonna be the object for wall anchors. And we can just go ahead and rename it, make sure that it is called prefab so that it makes more sense. And then we're gonna be placing this uh, basically a vector zero. And then the quaternion, the rotation is going to be set to identity. That way it's just gonna be set to all zeros. And then the parent in this case is just going to be the wall anchor that we retrieve from the actual scene. Now, the way that we can basically place this is we need to set the position, the local position rotation. That way we can place it right on the wall after we have parented to the wall anchor transform. And then we can just set it to zero, zero, so that way everything, there's no rotation and there's no positioning. Then we can go ahead and add it to our list. So now that we have it in our list, we're gonna be able to basically keep track of it. So now if we go back, we can start associating the different components in the inspector. And then we can, let's go ahead and quickly add the actual object that we're gonna be placing on all the different walls. This is just going to be a cube with the red color and then we can just resize it and also make it a prefab. Once we make it a prefab, we can go ahead and associate it with our component. So now what I'm gonna do on the MRUK component, we can go ahead and enable the MRUK demo. That way we can get things going and we can start pressing that button on that trigger. Basically that button on the controller, which is gonna be the, the trigger button. And then we also had a bug in here that we didn't specify what controller we wanted to use. So I just go ahead and fix that. So now if we go back into our simulator, you can see that all the log entries were added. We can see which IDs of the anchors were generated. We can also look at the different cubes on all the different walls. I mean, this is a very simple example, but it shows you the power of using the MRUK components. You can also see here that we can test in the actual device and it's basically tracking perfectly. The objects are attached to the anchors and everything works well. We can delete them, we can re-add them. I think this was a success. So let's go ahead and continue on in Unity and we're gonna be working on adding something called a scene debugger. And this is really helpful because it'll give you a lot of information that you can get from the actual SDK. So if you wanna get the key wall, if you wanna get the larger surface, the closest seat post, there's just a lot of things that you can do in here, such as in this case, I can get basically what's called a key wall. The system automatically does that for you. So you can use some of these basically SDK methods to, you know, to get that information. And in this other case, I can say, okay, what is the largest area for a specific label? And this is really helpful. Like if I wanted to place maybe a large object, maybe on the ceiling, maybe we have a rocket that comes down. So this is gonna give you some of that. It already has the logic that handles that. So that's really, really cool that Meta added some of that functionality. And then in this other case, I wanted to find out, you know, what's the closest point to me from the objects that it detects. So this is just another method that they provide. We can also start looking at how the Raycast reacts to the real world. We have Raycasts that are working, you know, with the ceilings. We have Raycasts working with basically all the objects around the area. 
This one is really cool because it allows you to detect whether we're inside the room or outside the room. All right, guys, thank you very much for your time today. If you guys have any questions about anything that I mentioned as it relates to the Meta Mixed Reality Utility Kit, let me know below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because it's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos in the future. And thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting my content. I appreciate it and have a good day, guys. Happy exocoding. coding.